Hey guys, John here with Terminal Goblin Games, and today we're going to be doing more adventure design. So if you didn't watch the uh, video before uh, where we create the monsters used for this adventure, then uh, go ahead and watch that. But if you don't feel like it, <laughs> then that's fine. Uh, and this is all based on some stuff that happened last week in my campaign. So I ran the Lost Dwarves adventure, and one of my players ended up getting cursed by the Hypnotic One, which turned him into a ghoul. And they killed him before he could, uh, they could figure out that the hypnotic one just needed to look at them again to cure them. So now they are on a quest to cure him. So currently, currently they're, they're over here in Grape Valley. And they are going, they plan on going to the big city here to look for a cure. So personally, since they have a cleric in the party, I'm going to have them talk to the priest. And he's going to point them towards... Um, a martial arts sect uh, down down here, which is going to then tell them, and it's going to inform them that the potion can be made. They have some alchemists that can do so. In return, they're going to need two thousand gold and the heart of a, or sorry, the demon stone of a suko. So now sukos uh, are the bosses of kappas, and those live near water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them. Uh, have the lair over here. So we're going to get a bit of a, a little hex crawl going on here. As you can see, uh, I've only detailed like a little starting area and I've expanded a little bit. Getting here, so we're going to go from here to here and then they're going to go here. Now this is going to be a couple of days of travel and they're still level two so this is going to be a little bit of difficult once they get off of these roads here. It's going to take them a, about a day to get here and then two days to get here, and then this is one... This is, I don't know the terrain yet, but at least two days to get over to this river. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make the actual uh, the actual suko layer, and then we'll come back and detail this hex map later. Right, so we're back over here to the map, and since this is taking place on the overworld, I'm going to give it my little background here to, kind of, to give it sort of a, uh, a little flair. Alright, so first things first, this is going to take part in a river. This is going to be a pretty big river, like you saw on the, on the hex map. Really, I don't want them to be able to see the other side, because this is supposed to be you know, pretty, pretty damn big. Alright, that'll be the shore here, and we'll, we'll have this right here be their, be their underwater nest. We can have this kind of be wooded. We can give the, uh, the players a little bit of cover here. Coming, And, uh, you know, detail doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be too... That'll be super detailed as long as the players get the uh, get the idea. Unless you you know, unless you like detailed maps, I know some people go through a lot a great amount of length for their battle maps. That's fine. It's just uh, it's just not my thing personally. All right, so you, you know, there's trees here, and you know, this is like the the grass line fading into the sand. So this battle map isn't going to be nearly as uh, as fleshed out as the dwarven one. Uh, simply because you know this this is a single location. <laughs> we pretty much we really only have a, a couple of things here we need to be. One we will call we'll call this two. We'll have uh put some stuff here and finally three. So now that we've done this battle map here, I'll save go back to this hex. Alright, so I know that I want this to be have some woods around it. So let's go back and find my wood label. And what do we need? What do we want around? We got a lot of we got a lot of forest here. Let's uh let's put some mountains. That'll that'll be nice. Give the uh since this is gonna be like a martial arts settlement, give it, you know, the the nice uh cordon cord, cordon, like cordon blue. Like uh separated, yeah. Lonely mountains. What this river cut through this mountain? Uh, this is a, these are forested mountains, and uh, if you guys are interested, like if you want these, I'm making all of this with GIMP, and I'm just making uh, usually vector stuff. So let's give it some mountains around here, and then I like to, as you can see over here, these little green uh, green bulbs. These are my hills, uh, forested hill, not forested like you know grassy hills. I like to have these come down, have these surround mountains. These need to be a little bit. Okay, so now this. These will take a couple of days to pass, so mountains are pretty pretty rough. I can do they can do uh five 
I think it's like five hexes a day when traveling. I'd have to look at my house rule doc. Uh, on flat road, so like this is two. They they would be able to get into this hill for one day, and then two days. Yeah, yeah, it would take them. It would take them about three days to get through here. And uh, of course, these are all random encounters. Uh, I roll three times a day, so three three times two for a full day is six random encounters they could possibly encounter. And on the third day, they'll be reaching it kind of midday, since they're only using one. Or sorry, two movement points to go from this hex to this hex. You know, if they get some random encounters, that's extra, extra stuff. And I will... Actually, I need to build random encounters, a random encounter table for this region. Uh, if you don't do custom ones, you can always just make... You can always just use the uh, the random counters from your book of choice. I use Basic Fantasy RPG. Actually, let's, uh, let's pull up the random encounters for Basic Fantasy RPG for this kind of place. So, they're mainly going to be mountains and hills and forests. Okay, you roll 2d8 on this table, and you see here we have quite a range. They could do, you know, rocks, a displacer beast, which would be crazy. There's a, there's a good amount of stuff they can run into, and not a lot of them they could deal with at level 2. Well, actually, no, they, they probably could deal with a lot of these, depending on how they play it out, or they could run from them. Kind of like all of these. Turning into like a unicorn, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm just going to use the basic fantasy one instead of bothering with doing custom ones since these are, these are pretty nice. Alright, well now that we have that, let's go ahead and move on over to making the, the written part of this adventure. Alright, so we have our document open here. I went and pre-populated it with the, the stuff I would usually do. And uh, let's get to going. Alright, so hooks. I already know what I'm using for a hook. I already have a cursed player, uh, and this is called to, to cure a curse. So I will go ahead and... Okay, so this is what we're going to have as like our, our baseline here. Uh, the characters, or maybe even, actually, maybe even an NPC. They've recently been, they've recently been cursed. You know, this could be, uh, this could rain. This could range from like a, like a level drain, you know, maybe like, maybe they've got a bad case of leprosy, or uh, maybe even, you know, maybe some mummy rot. If you, you know, don't have a cleric that has cure disease and you don't want to give your player access to high level clerics, then you could do something like this. I actually forgot that I was going to give you a table to roll on to see who the uh, who the players would hear the rumor from about the the alchemical uh, the alchemical cure of the curse that requires the demon stone from the suko. So we're just going to do a d6 table here. They could hear it from a barmaid. Now you could always play with these, so you know the uh, maybe the barmaid gets a little gets a little bit of the information wrong since it's hearing the second hand. You know, maybe the adventuring party uh, misunderstood, and they thought that it was made, or they thought that the demon stone would be worth a lot of money, which is why they were going for it. All right, so we can have them, um, you know, have an option to spice it up. You could have them hear it from a priest, and an adventuring party, a barmaid who ever heard someone talking about it, a local alchemist, a jeweler, or a mayor. Now, the alchemist and jeweler, they could both want it for uh, for other reasons, you know, for selling, making other potions, and things like that. The jeweler, you know, maybe wants to turn it to a, to a ring or something. Uh, the mayor, you know, he could be trying to cure something else too. So even if you don't have a party member or an NPC who's cursed, you could turn, you could do the similar thing with this by like what they want. All right, it's time to do the the map key. Uh, so you know, so this is pretty pretty simple here. Uh, so we're just going to you know, go ahead and now we need to determine how many kappas are here. You can see in a layer there's eight d6 kappas. I got 24 exactly, so we're going to have, as you see here, uh, every 25 kappas, uh, there is a suko. So I'm one off. Uh, however, they, they're going to need the uh, demon stone of a suko uh, for this, so I'm just going to add it in there. Might be, uh, you know, it might be a little cheating, but I'm sure, I'm sure the players will be okay with it. We have these three locations that they could be. So for one... And uh, as you can see here, they travel in, you know, 2d6 in the wild. So let's have 2d6 be over here at 1, scouting out these woods. 9, okay, that's a, that's a good chunk. I'm not going to put drown here because uh, these guys are in the woods, so, you know, they can't really drown. Well, I mean, I guess they could if they were like, there was like a, like a, like a pond or something here. But uh, we'll say no for this. I want to have uh, all of that in the bestiary too. Um, and you could always just download this PDF as well. 
So two, two would be like a perimeter guard. So we'll uh, we'll go ahead another two d six. Four, okay. Maybe maybe if these kappas are out here, maybe if these kappas, you know, if there's nine out here, you know, maybe they're maybe they're looking to expand. Like uh, you know, you go go do some stuff to some nearby villages that they they don't know is nearby, but they might they might think so. So because they're sending out this advanced scouting party here, and there's only four here in two, that means they're not super worried about their perimeter. Which means that this is going to be a, we could say that the, the Kappas own this section of the river. So they don't have any, you know, there's no feuding going on. Like this is just theirs. Alright, so the rest, there's 24. The 9 plus 4 is 13. 24 minus 13 is 11. And this Suko is a little bit harder to hit. These guys, since they're at the perimeter down here at 2, we're going to give them their drowning attack. All right, so it's treasure time. So we will see here, we'll bring this back up. See here, uh, the regular Kappas, they don't have a treasure type uh, because all of their treasure goes to the Suko. So you're really just going to be getting the, the lair treasure type here. Go ahead and go roll that up on the basic fantasy. So I don't really like this. Actually, actually no, this, actually, this works for me particularly because we are, uh, this is this isn't really a reward kind of quest. This is a you know fix some stuff we've already broken. So I'm just going to have them have 16 gold. But what I will do is I will write this down, and then for the uh, the PDF version we're working on here, I will add more. All right, so let's roll this again. Yeah, so this this is fine. Uh, assuming you're doing a similar thing to me, then you know, like where they're carrying a curse, you know, I think this is a much more okay treasure treasure hoard. However, you know, feel, feel free to change this. If you think this is too stingy, or maybe they just come across this layer, then, you know, feel, feel free to give them some more. Uh, I give a lot of treasure, so I'm not super worried about my, my players going broke for this. But uh, you do whatever fits your game. Alright, so that's, uh, that's really, really about it. Actually, let, let's add this. Since other people want to be running this, uh, I will add a extra uh, thing here. And we'll say, if... Fought if in combat two and six. Actually, no. Let's raise this to three and six. Well, these guys, these guys will uh, definitely be yelling out, and the guys on the perimeter down here are going to be uh, definitely on guard, trying to you know hear for any issues. So the reason I'm codifying uh, this is because not everyone you know not everyone runs stuff like me, and they they may forget that. So if you're running this adventure and this and you you know want to do this, then feel free. Uh, if you don't, again, do whatever you want. I, I don't care. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to transfer some uh, stuff over here to the bestiary and put the uh, put the lair picture attached to the PDF. So I will see you when I'm done with that. Alright, here we have it. Here's the, the finished PDF here at the, the map, and we got it down to one page this time. <laughs> uh, hopefully you enjoyed this adventure creation. Uh, if you want to see more, let me know. If you have uh, any ideas that you would uh, like to see me uh, you know, flesh out or give my take on, also let me know. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. See ya.